Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashib, Yahushai, Bahashib, Rakar Kudash. Double honors to the apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Ayash Kabar from the GMS Virginia camp coming at you with another short lesson that I pray that you find edifying. And the topic of this lesson is, or the title of this lesson is going to, or the title of this lesson, yeah, is going to be called, Where's Your Husband? Because as depicted in this image on the screen, a lot of the women, or a lot of women, you know, were taught, you know, that you could be independent and you could handle all things. But it was never intended for a woman to bear the burden of, of of all this weight, you know, all you know, like albeit poverty, hunger, homelessness, um, a lack of a lack of protection, you know, working in in a in in you know like an industrial environment, this that or the other. It was never the intent for a woman to be without a man, but the women have been taught to learn how to survive without a man. You know, and that brings about this this mindset that a lot of women have that they've grown up to accept, you know, and that's that F-ism, you know, and 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 a lot of a lot of these women are starting to realize that F-ism isn't or or hasn't been a beneficial thing in their lives. Because a lot of a lot of these women are starting to realize that they've been taught wrong. A lot of these women are starting to realize that they need a man. A lot of these women are starting to realize that they can't handle the burdens of the world when things go bad without a man, you know? And a lot of these women have been taught at a very young age to be self-reliant, independent. First of all, there's no such thing as an independent woman. At all. There's no such thing as an independent anything at all, you know, and 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 but a lot of these women have been taught that you don't need a man. You know, you don't need a partner to succeed in life because the terms of what makes a person happy in life has changed, especially when it comes to women. A lot of these women don't look at having a family as being prosperous or being successful, but instead they look at financial gain as being the rule of if they made it or not. But when this economy collapses and their money is worth less than a piece of paper that is printed on, then they're going to readily realize that they've worked for nothing, you know? They've gone to school and, 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 you know, like achieved great levels of education, which is bullshit. You know what I'm saying? All it is is an indoctrination. But they've gone to school and, and gotten that lambskin, you know, that told the world that they're at this level educationally. But at the end of the day, it ain't going to mean shit either. So everything that these women are working for and everything that these women are told, they're starting to realize that they've been lied to. You know, and and very soon, a lot of these so-called independent women are going to start to realize that they need a man more than anything in the world. More than anything, especially these Israelite women are going to realize that, that they need an Israelite man, specifically the elect of the Israelite man. You know, because it's going to get real bad out here. You know, but. Again, a lot of these people just don't realize that they need these things. Um, the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So a lot of these women have been taught at a very young age, you know, to take care of yourself. Don't depend on anybody. You don't need nobody. But, you know, if you ever need help, you could call mama. You could call Nana. You know, you could call great 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 grandmother will help you and nowhere in that does it do these women say call on your father 
You know, call on your brother. Call on your uncle. It's always call on a woman figure to pull you out of your situation. And it's even gotten so bad that a lot of these women are actually, um, you know, spitting that bullshit over to their sons. Whereas their sons are starting to call on mama more than they call on daddy. But that's another, that's another lesson for another time. You know, this is about the women right now. Because a lot of these women don't have husbands. They don't even know what the biblical term for a husband is. But meanwhile, they have committed adultery time after time and after time again. Not realizing that the man that you slept with your first time who actually entered into you is your husband. And as long as that man is living, that is your husband. You know, as long as that man... As long as that guy who went unto you the first time is still living, your husband is still around. But these women are being told and taught, you know, to go out there and, you know, test the waters, you know, go out there, and have fun, spread your legs, you know, to Tom, Dick and Harry until you find the right one. And what these women are actually doing is committing adultery. And the men are no different because a lot of these men would actually sleep with women if they know if they have husbands or not. So, you know. This place is just all fucked up, you know, but again, another another lesson for another time. So um, let me read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse eight, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So a lot of these women, you know, like as I was saying, a lot of these women are being taught at a very young age, you know, to be independent and with your independence. And once you start to realize that you can be independent in a kingdom that allows a woman to be independent, pride starts falling in. Whereas a lot of these women start to actually believe in the bullshit that they could be independent and live comfortably because they have the amenities that allow them to do so. You know, they're, they're, they're actually protected by, by the system. So with that, you know, these women start becoming prideful, you know, and then that deep embedment of 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 not needing anyone or needing a man starts to really set in. And then from that pride come, comes this haughty spirit, you know, where they act like they can't be touched. You know, where they act like they shit don't stink. But all the while, these women are you like having to deal with shit that they shouldn't have to deal with. You know, the things that women are dealing with today, their husbands are supposed to deal with this. But they don't know better because they've been told that you don't need a man, you know. And 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 and, and actually what's happening is, as I stated earlier, you know, these women are starting to come around and realize that they they fucked up. They fucked up, which, you know, a lot of prophets say this a lot. If 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 you <laughs> if you've had a man of the Lord and you turn your back on that man. Hey, you don't realize how blessed you were to have him in your life, let alone how blessed you were to still have him stay there. So for all you women who have left a um, the men of the Lord, man, you went for some rough judgment, you know? Um, oh, let me see. Yeah, come on. The book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters. You know, and that man can also apply to women. No woman can serve two masters. You know, and that's the dilemma that a lot of these women face. You know, a lot of these women claim that they want men, but they want to be able to, you know, do what they want to do. You know, they want to be able to live in the world and still control things. You know, they still want to be able to have a man available while they still are what doing the things that make men unhappy, especially the men of the Lord. And that's what I'm referring to. The men of the Lord, because you have a lot of women who are starting to realize that, you know, um, 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 you know, like, like as I, like as I was saying, you need a man or they need a man, but 
they still want to maintain their level of success in this wicked kingdom while still trying to maintain a man on the side. You know, you can't have it that way. You know, either, either you're going to bow down and be with that man or you're going to not bow down and still be a part of the system. You know, and that's part of the reason why a lot of a lot of women leave, you know, a man of the Lord, because they still want to be a part of the system. Well, you can't serve two masters. Just like us, we are women, you know, in the eyes of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So as us being considered women in the eyes of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, either we serve the Lord or we're a part of the world. We can't serve the Lord and mammon, mammon meaning the money, you know, we have to choose. And that choice has to be done by the Lord, of course, you know, because a man's ways is, is of the Abba Shimi Abba Shai. How can you, how can he understand his own way? So it's, you know, it's going to have to be put in us. Well, the same thing with women, you know, it's going to have to be put in them, you know, you know, the ship up of or ship out. You know, we, a lot of these women are starting to realize, man, hey, I can't do it alone. I need a man. And when they find a man, you know, they sit back and try to weigh their options. Well, maybe I can deal with this man this way and still be able to do what I want to do and go to the clubs. And no, 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 no. You can't serve two masters. Either you serve your man or you lose your man. You know, there's no in between bullshit. You know, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Well, the same thing applies to the women. Either women are, are going to love their men or they're going to hate their men. Unfortunately, a lot of these women hate the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. I'm not saying all of them, but most of them won't deal with the men of the Lord because they're stuck in a wicked kingdom. You know, they're stuck in that wicked mindset that keeps them trapped, you know, into going into worldly things day by day, you know. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve the most high in mammon. And the same thing applies to these women as as these scriptures apply to us and our power. These scriptures also apply to the women and their men. It applies. Either a woman's going to bow down and and serve her husband, or she's not, and she's going to lose her husband. You know. But a lot of these women, I keep saying a lot of these women, but it's true. A lot of these women will not bow down and serve their husbands. And so a lot of these women are forced, you know, to deal with things that they shouldn't have to deal with ever, ever. These burdens were not designed. Well, these burdens were not meant for a woman to have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, but the women are so stubborn and stiff necked that, that, you know, it's going to fall upon them anyway. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 15. But Jerusalem waxed fat. We waxed fat. When we left Egypt, we was waxing fat. We had gold. We had substance. We had, you know, this, that, or the other. You know, we had jewelry. We, yo, yo, we were waxing fat. And what did we do when we waxed fat? Let me get it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 15. But Jerusalem waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art, thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the most high. We did that to our power. You know, we had all this wealth. We had all these substances. We had all these abundances. And what happened? We were kicking it, boy. We were like, yo, can't nobody touch him. And what happened? We forsook our husband. We turned our back on our husband. We started committing spiritual adultery. You know, we started doing all types of wickedness because we turned our back on our husband. Well, the same thing applied to these women. 
these women in these today times have waxed fat. They have waxed so fat that they've actually turned their back on their husbands, which led me into bringing out that precept in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and 24. You cannot serve two masters. So these women in this kingdom is waxing fat. They got all types of abundances. You know, they got all types of leverages, you know, laws are passed in their names. You know, they got protection. They got education handed to them. They got jobs being dished out to them in any, in any shape, form or fashion. You know, they, they live in by, they live in environments where, you know, it's constant patrolling of police. Yo, these women are waxing fat. They got jury. They got thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. They are waxing fat. And what happened when they wax fat? They turn their back on their husbands. They turn their back on their men. And rightfully so. That's what we did as, as, as the wives or... Yeah, um, as the wives of Yahweh Hashem Yahushah. And what these women are doing or have done unto the nation of Israel is no different unto what we did to the Lord. We did the exact same thing. So I asked the question, where is your husband? Because as we were not supposed to have dealt with the things that we dealt with as, as the brides of Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, or as the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, or as the chosen people of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, we were not supposed to have dealt with these things. What, what more so these women? Where's your husband? You shouldn't have to deal with these day-to-day -day things. And, and, and quite honestly, in thinking about it, in the time to come, these women ain't going to be able to go out there in the street and scavenge for food. And if they do scavenge for food, they put themselves at risk. So it's going to get real bad for a lot of these women. You know, they're going to have to deal with poverty. They're going to have to deal with hunger. They're going to have to deal with homelessness. They're going to have to deal with neglect. They're going to have to deal with financial insecurity when the kingdom has, has when, <laughs> yo, where this wicked kingdom has given them financial security. And all of these things are going to be taken away in a day. Well, I really can't say a day, but a lot of these things are going to be snatched away from these women very quickly. You know? But you have been waxing fat. And in your fatness, you have neglected your husbands. Because in your in the Lord's eye, we are your gods. So you 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 wax in fat and you turned your back on your husband, which is your power, your protection. <sighs> Reading on. Um then, then he forsook the most high, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And that's what you went, and that's what we did, and that's what you women are doing just the same. We carried that burden of poverty, hunger, neglect, homelessness, immigration, you know, financial insecurity. As men of Yahabashim Yahshah, we carried that. You know, and now that we turn back unto Yahabashim Yahushai, he's lightening our load. Yahabashim Yahushai is, is now starting to listen to his men. He's starting to listen to his people. He's starting to turn back his head, you know, and 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 enjoy the sweet savior of our prayers. So as men of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that's what we're doing to find good grace in the Lord. You know, we're listening to our husband. We're following the commandments of our husband. We actually know who, 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 who our husband is. But you women, you don't know who your husband is. You're not listening to your husband. You're not following your husband. Why? Because you wax fat. You don't have to. But the day is coming where you're going to have to do something. And you better do it quick. Salah.
and you're going to have to do it quick. Because in a time of trouble, ain't nobody going to sit back and say, well, then, you know, let me explain this to you. No, 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 no. In a day of trouble, if you don't get it right now, hey, I'm not going to explain it to you when, you know, the Gerger troops are roaming the streets and now you want to sit back and learn. No, 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 because by then it's too late, you know? Continuing on, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 16. They they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods and abominations provoked him to anger. The same way we provoke Yahweh Shem Yahweh to jealousy in the same way we provoked him to anger is the same way you women have provoked your husbands to jealousy and provoked your husbands to anger. By going and following other gods. And those other gods can be your career, your money, other men, your homes, uh, 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 um, 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 you know, stuff that means nothing. Anything outside of your husband is what you were chasing. And now you lost your husband. And now you have to deal with all of the calamities of the world. When, when in fact, you were not designed to deal with these things. You were not to deal with you were not made to deal with these things. But now there's your lot because you have chosen that. Because you refuse to listen to your husband. You refuse to listen to the righteous men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because you're stiff necked. So the same way we dealt with these things and we went off is the same way you're dealing with these things because you went off. And we paid for it. And you're going to have to pay for it as well. Because Yahabashim Yahabashai got a problem with you women. He has a very big problem with you women. And quite honestly, a lot of men have a problem with you women too. Because you have become much like the enemy. You have, you, you have become the enemy. You know? The scriptures say... She, she who is my enemy shall see it and she shall be trodden down like a mire in the streets. You're the enemy of the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You should be very afraid. You, you Let that sink in. And this isn't directed towards those women who are trying. This isn't directed towards those Israelite women who, yeah, you know, like who are trying. You know, this isn't directed towards you. This is directed towards those two thirds of women or those that large multitude of women who refuse to repent. This is directed towards them. As well as the men, because without your husband, you know, like in terms of men, without your husband and your husband being your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, without him, you're unprotected. And for you women, without your husband, the man who went unto you, without him, you're unprotected. You know, but you, you, you know, you, you people just don't realize how serious this is. This is detrimental. You know? Uh, let me see if I want to read a little more. Um, let me see. I might read one more verse. Uh, yeah, so I'll read verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. They sacrifice unto devils, not the most high, to gods whom they knew not, and to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. So you women... You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you're sacrificing unto things that you're not used to sacrificing unto. A lot of you women have actually gone into witchcraft. You know, a lot of you are in these heathen church. Well, you know, in these churches and and whatnot. But, you know, you're sacrificing into things that you typically haven't sacrificed unto. You know. And and with that, you 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 have literally forsaken your husband's. Your protection. 
your power, your gods. So what's going to happen in that day when, when, <laughs> what's going to happen in that day when all hell breaks loose and you, and then you then want to turn onto your husband for help? Because at that day, your husband going to be like, 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 screw you. Any man in his right mind would be like, screw you, unless, you know, you, you repent beforehand. But most men are done with you women. Most men are fed up with you women. You know, because you sought after other gods. You went to other nations for help. You went to Esau and Edom for your protection. You went to Esau and Edom for your education. You went to Esau and Edom for your money. You, 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 you know, you went to the enemy for everything. You literally went to your enemy for the one of all things, as we did. You know, and with that came a sacrifice. An allegiance, a binding contract that you've made with the devil, you know, to destroy your own families, destroy your own nations. You women have actually gone into a contract with the devil just to succeed in the kingdom that's about to burn. How vain is that? Anyhow, I think you get the point. I think you get the point. And to you women, where are your husbands? Where's your husband? And to you men, where's your husband? You know? Where's your husbands? The men's husbands, the men's husband is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. The woman's husband is that man that went unto you, that took your virginity. And if that man is still alive and you out here doing all types of adultery and whoredoms, then, then you're doing that man wrong unless you repent. But where's your husband? Because it's about to get real bad out here that you women aren't going to be able to roam the streets and go to your local supermarket and cry over the fact that there's bread on the floor and meat on the floor and you know like how you're going to feed your kids the time is coming very soon where a lot of you women are going to be stuck where you're at you're not going to be able to go mobile you're going to be stuck you're going to be locked down you're going to be afraid to leave your homes you're going to be afraid to answer your door you're going to be afraid to do anything where's your husband where is he you know, and the same thing goes for the men of Israel, the elect. We, we have turned back unto our husband. So that in that day, our husband can protect us, feed us, deliver us, shield us, guide us. That's what we strive for. What are you striving for? Anyhow, again, you... You know, you people get the point. And so with that, I'd like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Kodash. Double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Ayash Kabar from the GMS Virginia camp. I pray that you find this lesson edifying and Adawan Ratazah. Until the next lesson, Shalom.